Do you really need a full-frame sensor camera? Yes. No. Maybe. But chances are, if you're not sure, at this point, you probably don't. Unless you're shooting large, and I mean large wall images like maybe six feet, eight feet long, or you're doing professional sports photography under low-light situations because that's one of the full frame advantages, if you will, of the full frame sensory camera. Better image quality under low light and also you're going to get the actual focal length of the lens that you're using, not to mention better image quality. But if you are using a crop sensory camera, like in my case I'm a Nikon shooter, so it's called a DX crop sensor, that doesn't mean you cannot get beautiful images because you certainly can. If you're shooting, say, electronic images like for a computer screen or tablet or even album size prints like a 10 by 20 inches wide album size or you're doing wall portraits maybe 16 by 20, 24 inches long or you can get beautiful images from a crop sensory camera. We first started, there was no full frame image sensory camera. It was all crop sensor. And the first professional camera that I used at that time was, was a six megapixel Fuji S2 on an icon body. And I had beautiful 24 by 36 inch images that I sold. And they were also on my wall and they were crystal clear. And of course I used great lenses for that. I, uh, my favorite lens still is to this day is the Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens. And if you put that lens on a cheaper body, on a even less of a megapixel body, you can still get beautiful images. And there's also many advantages. The cost, everything is less, body, lens, lighter, easy to travel with, smaller. So that's actually a nice benefit as well. And you also get a benefit of the focal length on the telephoto side. So in other words, if you're shooting, say, a 200 millimeter, your 200 becomes a 300 millimeter lens. That could be an advantage on the telephoto lens, but not so much on the wide side. So a 10 millimeter lens on a crop sensor camera like in my case, the Nikon DX becomes the 15 millimeter lens. So I'm losing some of that wide effect. So I usually have to buy a lens that goes extremely wide to get a decent wide angle effect, where on the full frame sensor camera, you're getting that, you're getting the actual focal length of that lens. Now I remember seeing some beautiful images taken back in the early days when film was still being used. I remember seeing some beautiful images with 35 millimeter cameras. And at the time that I got started, most everybody was using two and a quarter, like Hasselblad's, Mamiya, RB67's, but everything was two and a quarter for the most part. But I remember seeing some beautiful images by Gary Bernstein he would, uh, I guess he was a fashion photographer, you would say, and he had some beautiful, beautiful images taken with, I believe he mostly shot Kodachrome and Ektachrome, but he knew what he was doing and the chrome film was just spectacular. And I also remember though, I uh, first got started, people, they were saying about, uh, this was back in the 70s, probably even the late 60s, goes to show my age, but, uh, shows you how how photography can keep you young so keep taking those photos folks it's it's really it's good but uh, <laughs> anyway uh, if you're going to be using well i remember hearing the stories about people using a, uh, a medium format camera they would call that like for instance the Hasselblad i remember them saying that's a candid camera so at the time, I guess right before then, they were using view cameras, 4x5s, 5x7s, 8x10s. So it just goes to show, though, if your image or if your 
whatever it is that you're capturing on, whether it's film or it's a sensor, your resolution is definitely, definitely going to be so much better as long as you're utilizing it in your output. Like, for instance, if you saw an Ansel Adams print, an actual photograph, because much of the images he took were taken on um, 8x10 view camera. And if you saw actual photographs, huge wall size images, they were just, they would just knock your socks off. They were just fantastic. And the same with Yosef Karsh. He used, for the most part, he used an 8x10 view camera to capture his amazing portraits. For his time, he photographed just about everybody from kings, queens, presidents, dictators, you name it, he photographed them using his view camera. And if you saw those images, even in a book, they are spectacular. But I got a chance to see him once, and he was, his images were, ooh, just spectacular to say the least.